Okay, good morning everyone. Shalom Aleichem, Agat Thank you for coming this morning. People came from all over the world. Some people came from down the block. Some people came from, not as far as Perth, Australia, but from Borough Park. That's pretty close. And um, okay, I want to share with you uh, an amazing thought from the Aruch Laner. The Aruch Laner wrote a, a commentary on Shas that has two parts. Uh, so on the Sechta Sukkah, it's called Aruch Laner. On Hilchai Sukkah, the Aruch Laner wrote something called Bikure Yaakov. Bikure Yaakov. Now Bikure Yaakov was such a chash of a chibor that the Aruch Laner sent it to Rabbi Kiv Eger. And Rabbi Kiv Eger was very taken by it. Rabbi Kiv Eger even wrote footnotes on part of Bikure Yaakov. Today's, shir, today's breakfast is dedicated by Reb Gordon Halevi Zisaltz in honor of Klal Yisrael, Eretz Yisrael, and Kihilas Teferis Mordechai, and in honor of our victory in fighting our enemies. Okay, but Rabbi Kivega wrote uh, notes on part of Bikurei Yaakov, and he sent a letter to the Aruch Laner that in the course of time he'll write even more notes, and in the interim Rabbi Kivega passed away. That's what's written in the Hakdama of the Bikurei Yaakov. So, you know, we all know the greatness of Reb Kiveger, but you see the greatness of the Arch Lener, that Reb Kiveger wrote footnotes on the Bikurei Yaakov. So in the end of the section Arch Lener, Masech uh, the Arch Lener points out that there are three reasons given in the, in the, in the Gemara and Sukkah why Sukkah, Lamala, Me Esrem, Amma is Pasal. Who remembers? What are the three reasons? Who remembers the three reasons? Why is Sukkah, Lamala, Me Esrem, Amma Pasal? Number one? What? Good. Naftali, who says that? Rabba. Rabba says more than 20 amas, you can't see. The next answer is what? Because if it's higher than 20 amas, you're not sitting in the shade of the schach, you're sitting in the shade of the walls. That's Rab Zera. And Rabba says more than 20 amas, he says what? Diras Keva. Okay, so we have Rabba. Rabzeira, Rabba. Today we're going to focus on Rabzeira. Rabzeira says that a sukkah more than 20 amos is possible because if it's higher than 20 amos, you're not sitting in the shade of the schach, you're sitting in the shade of the walls. Okay? So the Aruch Laner uh, says each one of these answers teaches us a different yisoid in the meaning of the mitzvah of sukkah. We're going to focus on Rabzeira. You know, Chazal tell us and this is a, a, a famous Chazal that the Beis HaLevi talks about, and the Archaner has a different approach. He says that Chazal ascribe to Yosef HaTzadik the Midah of Bitachain. Chazal say, who is a Boiteach Bashem? Yosef, Yosef HaTzadik. Where, where do Chazal praise Yosef? Ashrei Ha'ish, Asheloi Sam, Miftachai Ba'adam, who is someone who doesn't trust in man? Yosef. And then Chazal say, V'loi panel rahavim, but cursed is someone who, who doesn't turn to the Egyptians. Who turned to the Egyptians? Yosef. So, it's very interesting. In the same breath, Chazal praise Yosef and criticize him. They praise him for having betachon and they criticize him for not having betachon. So, you know, make up your mind. Was he a Baytech Bashem or was he not a Baytech Bashem? So the Aruch Laner says, when it comes to Bitachain, there are really uh, three extremes. Because we could ask on Yosef HaTzadik, we discussed this in the Sukkah. What's the problem? What, what did he do wrong? He asked the Sarah Mashkim, you know, when you get out, remember me, put in a good word for me. What's wrong with that? That's, you know what you call that? That's called Heshtadlos. You're allowed to do Heshtadlos. Well, what's wrong with what Yosef did? Yosef's languishing in jail. There's a guy who he did a favor to. So he tells the guy, you know, when you get out, maybe put in a good word for me. What's wrong with, you know, how to ask somebody, you know, I need a job, put in a good word for me. What's wrong with what Yosef did? So the uh, Archanar says like this. There are some people that are on such a high level, they don't do any uh, hishtablus at all. Right or wrong? Wrong. Wrong. You're not a not do hishtablus? You're not an angel. This world, you have to do hishtadlas. God said, So you got to do hishtadlas. There's some people who have tremendous uh, faith in their own ability that they put all their, you know, they put all their faith in their hishtadlas. Is that right or wrong? Also wrong. 
So what is the correct approach? The correct approach is you have to do full hashtadas. However, once you do it, you have to have absolute bitachain that Hashem will help you and your hishtadlus will not bring you the, the bracha. It's just a prerequisite to get the bracha. Our Rosh Shiva of Henech Leibowitz would always say, you have to try as if it was all dependent on you and recognize that it's irrelevant what you do. <laughs> you hear that? You have to put in work as if it's all dependent on your work, knowing that it has nothing to do with, what, with your work. It's just when you work, now you're eligible for Hashem's bracha. How is a person supported? Kulay nisim. But, you have to, it's exer sakasav. You gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta ride the bicycle. When you ride the bicycle, you get, you get the parnasa. So the, here's the thing. Yosef, when um, he had bitachon in Hashem, However, he made one mistake. His mistake was, can a person think, when I do hishtadlos, so now I trust that Hashem's going to help me with this hishtadlos. In other words, like this. We know that you have to do hishtadlos. We know that when you do hishtadlos, Hashem will help you. Can you think, okay, I have a job. Pick a job. Shragi, pick a job. A technician. Technician. Could a person think, okay, now that I would go to work as a technician, Hashem is going to give me Parmanasa through this work as a te technician. You'd say, well, yeah, that's why I'm doing Hishtadlas, because this is the way that Hashem is going to provide me with what I need. No, that's a mistake. One should think, once I do the Hishtadlas as a technician, Hashem could provide me with Parmanasa in endless possible ways. Who knows how Hashem is going to provide me? When Yosef asked the Sar HaMashkim to put in a good word for him, so Yosef said, now I did my Hishtalos, now I have Bitochen Hashem, that by asking the Sar HaMashkim, Hashem is going to help me through the agent of the Sar HaMashkim. You know what Yosef should have thought? Now that I asked the Sar HaMashkim, now, Har Beish Luchim Lamakim. Says the that's the site of the Sukkah. The site of the Sukkah is, that the walls are our efforts and the schach is the protection of Hashem and the brach of Hashem. But you got to make sure you're not sitting in the shade of the walls. You have to sit in the shade of the schach. Because you're sitting in the shade of the walls, that means you're taking refuge in your own efforts. You can never think that it's my own efforts that will bring me the parnasa. I need to put in my efforts. But once I do, then it's... Ribbon Shem has many, many ways to provide for you. And this is, uh, this is a very important uh, limud in life in general. You know, we think we can script how Hashem is going to help us. No, you do your part. Hashem will help you. You know, Chavos Havavos writes that sometimes Hashem does not allow a person to achieve what He wants to achieve. And sometimes Hashem allows a person to achieve it, but not through the means that He thought He would. And both of these are for a person to recognize that he doesn't run the world. Certainly, if you want to do something and it doesn't work out, so you realize it's not my world, it's Hashem's world. But even often, we get what we want, but not, how, not the way that we wanted to, to get it. In other words, we wanted to get whatever it is. We wanted to make X amount of money. We wanted to accomplish a certain thing. And we thought we would get it through a way that we scripted and Hashem orchestrates that we get it a different way. And this is all to realize that uh, the world belongs to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So the Yisoyed of sitting in the shade of the schach and not in the shade of the walls is the walls are our hishtadlos and the schach is tzila de mehemenusa, the protection of Hashem. And we have to realize once we build those walls, do you have to have walls? Yes, of course you have to have walls. Once you have them, you can't sit, you can't bask in their protection. You have to bask in the protection of the schach. Now, I want to tell you um, two very interesting things along the same lines, and we'll wrap it up. Yesterday we learned by Shal Shudas, and we learned in the Gemara Ksubis, that somebody who lives in Chutz Aretz, it's as if he has no God. And we explained yesterday by Shal Shudas, the meaning is like this, that in Eretz Yisrael, God deals with the person directly, without any intermediary. But in Chutz Aretz, Hashem deals with us through go-betweens. 
through, through the sarim. So the idea is when you sit in the sukkah though, and the sukkah is the shade of Hashem, you're directly under the protection and the hashgach pratis of HaKadosh Baruch Hu without any intermediary. That's one of the principles of the sukkah, that we, uh, we bypass any go-betweens, we're directly in the shade of Hashem. There's an amazing little tidbit about the Dalad Minim. This is brought in the Sefer Seder Hayoim. Seder Hayoim was written by Rav Moshe ben Machir. He's the author of the first tefillah we say in the morning when we wake up. Shlomo, what's the first tefillah we say in the morning when we wake up? Maidani, very good. You go to your good yeshiva. Do you know who wrote Maidani? Rav Moshe ben Machir, Talmud of Arizal. He says, Gordon, what kind of tree do you have in your front yard? What is it called? You know what the red berries? The red berry tree in front of Gordon's house. The way it gets blessing is there's an angel. It's called the angel of the red berry tree in front of Gordon's house. And he takes care of that tree. And Menachem Fuchs, uh, Dr. Menachem Fuchs, Menachem Yeshaya ben Rabbi Huda Halevi, there's a tree in front of your house. What is it called? You don't know the name of the tree. What's the name? Okay. But that tree also has a malach that takes care of it. It's called the malach that takes care of the tree in front of Dr. Fuchs's house. And I also have a tree in front of my house. It's called a... What is it called? Crepe myrtle. myrtle. There's a malach that takes care of the crepe myrtle tree. But one of the, one of the malachim <laughs> doesn't like that tree. Not, you know, he, he, he fights that tree most of his existence. The other two malachim are good with the tree. There are three of them, okay? However, there's four plants that have no malachim that only God deals with directly. There are only four plants in the world that have no sarim and have no malachim. And they are the lulav, the esroig, the hadasim, and the aravais. He said, Shamati, kilachol ilan ve'ilan, oy esef, oy yerek, yesh sar, shoyleid oylav. V'oymer lo'i gadel, grow! V'dal en minim elu, lo'i hishlito im ha-kadosh baruch hu b'yad sar, v'shoiter, ala k'v'yachal, mi-koychai, o me-hashgachasai, ha-pratis hem g'daylam. So, the Yom Tif of Sukkot, we work on our bitachain. We put our faith only in ha-kadosh baruch hu. That really, there's no other force in the world that could help us or could harm us. We sit only in the shade of the schach. We don't sit in the shade of the walls. We don't put any faith in our own efforts. We have to put in our own efforts. And you can't cut corners. When you put in your own efforts, you have to put in every ounce of energy you have. You can't say, well, you know, it's only a, it's only a hechi timsa that Hashem is giving you a bracha. No, you have to act as if it's dependent on you, knowing that it has nothing to do with you. Okay, now, are you ready for the grand finale? The Torah says, Basukois, Teishvu, what does Yeshvu stand for? It says with Moshe Wolfson, Yeshvu, V'yiftichu, V'cha, Yoidei, Shemecha. Yeshvu, V'yiftichu, V'cha, they will trust in you, those who know your name. As we know, why is it, why the reference to those who know your name? First of all, the Sukkah, which is 91, are the two names of Hashem. Alef Dal Nun Yod and Yod Kei Vav Kei. Alef Dal Nun Yod is, is uh, 65 and Yod Kei Vav Kei is 26. So the Sukkah are the two names of Hashem. And the Dal and Minim are the four Oisiyos of the Shem Havaya. As the Lavush brings from the Rikanti, that we put the four species together to be Miyached, the four Oisiyos of the Shem Havaya. Uh, the, he brings the story of, someone, of the dream of... Uh, there was a separation in the Shem Havaya and he realized it was because he wasn't putting the Dalad Minim together. So the Sukkah represents the Shem Hashem. The Dalad Minim represents the four Oisiyas of the Shem Hashem. And through these two mitzvahs, it strengthens Yeshvu v'yiftechu v'cha yoide'e shemecha. Have a great day, everyone. Agutamayed. If you want to join us,